Welcome back to Education Matters. We're going to continue our conversation with Governor Roy Cooper. Again, thanks for being here today. Appreciate it. Thank you, um, I want to talk a little bit about school infrastructure, buildings, not just new buildings that, that, that need to be built. I mean, folks hear about declining population and declining enrollment, but the fact is we still have a lot of schools that they're just really are out of code, unsafe, sort of need to be upgraded. DPI's last budget or last scan said we had an $8 billion need over five years. That was before last year's hurricane. Right. Right. Um, so where, what are you proposing and sort of what's your take on the competing um, um, ideas coming out of the House and Senate? We talked about it and mentioned it in the headlines. You know, in general, the deal has been the state supports education and pays the salaries while the counties provide support for the infrastructure in the local schools. We found that so many counties across our state struggle with having the tax base to pay all of the money that they need to have good quality schools for their kids. In 1996, we provided a school construction bond to help the counties out. We're in a position now where we need to help them out again. You mentioned $8 billion in school construction that is needed. 40% of the school buildings the schools now are over 50 years old. I was in Rutherford County the other day. They have a school that's almost 100 years old. Uh, that's great for nostalgia, but it's not <laughs> so great for, for those right. young people who are in those classrooms. So we proposed a $2 billion bond that would help the counties with school infrastructure. There's strong support for this out there. No county would get less than $10 million. The Speaker of the House has proposed a similar bond. It's less, it's 1.5 billion, but still a strong push for right. bonds. The good things about school construction bonds are number one, the people get to decide, they get to vote on it. Number two, we all know exactly where the money is going and the people get to, to see that. And you can, you know, there's always a debate about how to divide it up and what factors you look at whether a county has made a good attempt, the county's wealth, all of that. Uh, and then we get lower interest rates and get to pay for construction now, which is lower construction cost, and get it done. I think this is the most fiscally responsible way to do it. We keep our AAA bond rating. We keep our debt service service payments at yeah, under three percent. We had Treasurer. It's, it all we, works. Yeah, we had Treasurer Falwell on the uh, just a few weeks ago. Now he hasn't taken a, a formal position on either or, but it said we can do it. Yeah. I mean, and he's and he's been on record saying that we, we certainly have Absolutely the capacity can. to do that. It seems to you know. So I, it, I'm a little mystified sometimes that there. We, we keep sort of kicking this down the road, given well, the, it's only going to get worse. You know, the the Senate leadership has proposed a pay as you go proposal. What's wrong with that is that when you take money off of the top of the budget, you don't have enough to invest in teacher salaries and technology and textbooks. And what you do is you leave it to the whims of future legislatures as to who gets what, and nobody's really sure about what the plan going Kinda forward is. Kind of hard to count is. on a, a building plan when you don't know it, for sure. It, it is, and it's almost like uh, spending your gas money to buy a car. I mean, we need to make our schools run and we need to make those investments. And I think the best way to go is a school bond because then the people would be involved in this. We know what we're doing. I hope that we can work something out uh, it's okay to provide some help to schools out of the budget. We've done that with right. Hurricane Florence, sure. and it, we know some help is needed. They've started a fund over uh, with state lottery funding that's helping to some of the poorer school system, but it takes a long time to get that money. I'd like to get hammers swinging all across right. the state and make sure that the kids have good quality schools right. and to get, go and to. And maybe get some of these mobile classrooms out of, out of use. All right, let Absolutely. Me, um, um, private school vouchers, opportunity scholarship program. Your budget proposal calls for phasing that program out. Um, yeah. Why? Accountability. So our public schools, our charter schools, have to be accountable to the taxpayers about how we invest taxpayer money and to show performance for that investment. Uh, the private school vouchers, money goes out for these private schools with little to no accountability. I would, you would think that 
uh, a lot of people who would support this would believe in accountability of taxpayer dollars, but there is none. We're struggling to get enough now to pay for our public schools right. and for our teacher salaries. And I think that this is an expense that we should stop in North Carolina. Well, you were Attorney General. I mean, this, I would, does it concern you when you see this combination of the lack of accountability with some of the various, oh, let's call them scandals that have come out? I mean, the, the, the number one private school voucher school in, in Fayetteville, Trinity Christian, you know, they've, they've had someone embezzling money. They're getting a million dollars a year putting out some really great basketball players, but we don't know much else about them. And then you said we just had the um, the scandal that came out about this more about about recruiting t uh, students from other schools. So. Well, those are the things you know about. Right. And the problem is that there's really no system to tell you how those dollars are being invested. And so, with the struggle that we have now to to make sure we pay our teachers what they deserve, that we get a good principal in every classroom and a good teacher in every school. You know, we we've, we've had debates. I've, I've disagreed with Republican leadership regarding school vouchers, with slapping grades on schools that, right. that cause problems with respect and don't really show the true performance. But one thing we've been able to agree on is that we're gonna improve public education if you get a good teacher in every classroom and a good principal in every school. Right. So if we can focus our attention on getting the very best professionals that we can and, you know, try to stay out of their business, hold them accountable, but let them teach, let them lead the schools, I think we'll see significant improvement in it. Well, that's a good segue into my, I want to ask you about the, the what I call the Leandro Commission, the, yeah. uh, your commission on access to sound basic education. Supreme Court found, it's been more than 20 years, the Supreme North Carolina Supreme Court has said, we're not meeting our obligation under the Constitution. You're the first governor, you've put together this commission, there's, there's the commission's work, there's the consultants. So, so what do you want to see happen? What do you expect to see happen coming out of this, out of your commission and out of this, uh, the consultants that were hired by the courts? One of the, the great things about our state is that our constitution is, is ingrained with education. I mean, we talk about the guarantee of a, a sound, basic sound public education for our young people. We were the first state in this country to open our doors to higher education supported by the, gov yes. the government with the uh, University of North Carolina. So we, we believe in education in this state. The Constitution requires that every child in this state receive a sound basic education and we know the inequalities that exist across our state, particularly in our poor rural counties, but there are also people in our urban counties who aren't getting the kind of education that they deserve. This commission we have set up is working in conjunction with a consultant that has been appointed by the court. Right. Judge David Lee is overseeing the Leandro case and the implementation of how we go about a sound basic education. I created the Leandro Commission to work with this consultant by the court. It's got all of the parties, the plaintiffs and the defendants, look forward to involving the State Board of Education in this process. And what we hope we come forward with is a plan that can address the issues. And it probably will go further than just our schools. It, it is going to well, involve health care and concern about childhood abuse and neglect. If, if there's if there's a, if there's a strong report, I mean, and what I understand about the sort of legal process, there could be a, a consent decree that the could plaintiffs be. and the, and the could state um, could agree to it. But then, how is that enforced? I mean, we've been you've been, you've been in this in this um, uh, policy arena for some time. Right. We don't really have in a history of the of the courts forcing the general assembly. Let's say they they say we need to spend more money. Right. They can't make them do that. How does how do you well, see that well, happening? What you know, what you see mostly from these orders is a goal. You need to provide a sound basic education for young people. You need more pre-kindergarten slots. Those kinds of goals. This court could get more specific about what needs to be done so that performance could be required under the court order. We don't know what all of those issues will be yet. And of course, we need to be careful about what is in a consent order that the state and the State Board of Education and others would sign. Right. But we do know that it is important that we get the children the education that they right. deserve. And so 
uh, we need to step up and get that done. All right, last question. This is going to be an easier one, I think. <laughs> I know you're the governor of the whole state, but I also know that you don't hide your rooting loyalties when it comes <laughs> to your Tar Heels. So, is Carolina going to get through this weekend to the Final Four, and can this state possibly survive a UNC Duke National Championship game? It, you know, if, if we have Phase Four with Duke versus UNC for the National Championship, I, I just don't know. I've heard so many people <laughs> who say they don't want it because they just couldn't stand it. But, you know, it's going to be a great tournament. we got a great state for basketball. In my brackets, I got 15 out of 16. Oh, look at you. Week 16. So our we'll governor, see. I picked Carolina to win it all this guy. time. There so we'll go. see. Governor we'll see. Cooper, thanks thank for you. being thank here. You, we Keith. appreciate it. I, yes, I appreciate sir. all you do. All right, thank you. After the break, this week's final word.